So this is what you're looking at. So when you see this movement here, remember the form's name is seeking the bridge. So when you go out one, over, one, two, three, you are learning to find the bridge, to find the bridge. This distance is exactly the same every single time I do it. Every single time I do it. Can you see, it felt like I could break it then. Yeah. Can you see? But it's not as easy as that. This is slow, it's not real. But this movement is, this movement I could do for real here, that as a recovery position. And some people would say, well, why did you do that when you could have done that? Just because you do. Sometimes you go in like this and you're backing off. So I'm backing off. Can you see that? So it's not the time to punch. The punch won't be effective and he's got the forward momentum on me. But if I'm going off and I go like that, it just gives me a recovery. And so again, this ability to locate the elbow and press into the elbow is extremely useful to you and has many more functions than just basics. So if you're punching again, if I'm blocking at the wrist and I can slip up and get the elbow, there's a big advantage. If I'm doing chiso and I can get up to your elbow, it gives me a big advantage. If I'm stuck inside and I can get your elbow and drag it across, that's an advantage to me. If I'm being pressed and on here, doesn't matter, yeah? here, if I can control him near the elbow, that again is a good advantage to me. It's a nice strong movement because it suppresses his weight down and is nice and strong. So all of these movements are useful if you can learn to control the elbow. So please don't get past that movement and think this is rubbish. This is an essentially a movement that will take your Wing Chun training to another level because it will help you to understand why when you're training, you so often try to control the elbow and you're not at the hands. So you're not